Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering a question from um, C12 January or June, sorry, 2018. This is a question which is to do with integration of P1. So I'm going to save it under my P1 work to help students revise for P1 style questions. So this question here is about integration. It says here a curve C has equation given by y equals f of x and tells us um, where x is greater than 0, where f dash of x, f dash of x is equal to 5x squared plus 4 over 2 root x minus 5. And we know that the point P, which is 4, 14, lies on C. So we've got to find what the original function f of x is, writing each term in a simplified form. So what they've given us here is they've given us the gradient function, the derived function, the first derivative. Okay, if they give you something in the form of f of x, then when you differentiate it, you get f dash of x. If they give you something in forms of y, then it's called dy dx. It's exactly the same thing. dy dx as compared to y is the same as f dash of x as compared to f of x. So if you want to go from the derivative back to the original function, we have to integrate. We have to integrate. If you want to go from the original function to the derivative, we have to differentiate. Okay, so what we have to do here is integrate. Okay, so we have to integrate this. So first of all, we've got f dash of x equals, we have to try to write this first in a form which is easy for us to integrate. All right, so we have to, the same kind of procedure as for preparing something for integration and differentiation, same thing. We have to se separate them out as separate terms and we have to write them such that you have one power of x on the numerator. So here I can write this as 5x squared over, now root of x is x to the power of a half, so I can write this as 2x to the power of a half. And then I have plus 4 over, again 2x to the power of a half. So I'm just separating this into two separate fractions. And then I've got my minus 5 at the end. So I haven't started uh, integrating yet, I've just got it, I'm getting it ready right now for integration. So now we can, we can combine these two x um, power terms x to the power of 2 um, over x to the power of a half is the same as x to the power of 2 minus a half in brackets. The, you subtract the powers when you're dividing numbers in index form. And this is going to be, well, the 4 and the 2 cancel out. That gives you 2 on top. And you're left with plus 2x to the power of negative a half. And the minus 5 is fine as it is. All right, so let's just simplify that. That's 5 over 2 x, now 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2, um, plus 2x to the power of negative a half minus 5. So we haven't even started integrating yet. We've just prepared it for integration by writing them as separate terms with one x uh, term simplified and all the x terms written in the numerator. Okay, so no thirds, the square root change to x to the power of a half, if there's x on both numerator and denominator, you combine them together. If there's any x in the denominator, you wrote it on top with a negative reciprocal um, form. So there we have, sorry, the reciprocal form, not negative. The power changes sign and it comes on top. Now, now we are ready to integrate this. So the integral of f dash of x with respect to x is what's going to give us what f of x is. So f of x is given by integrating this function. So we've got to integrate 5 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 2x to the power of negative a half minus 5. We've got to integrate all of that with respect to x. So that's going to give us, now with integration it's the opposite, the inverse of differentiation. You have to first add 1 to the power and then divide by the new power. So this is like 5 over 2 x to the power of that. If you add 1 to 3 over 2, you're going to get 5 over 2. Then you have to divide by the new power, which is 5 over 2. Okay, and here you've got 2x. If you add 1 to a minus a half, you get plus a half divided by a half. And if you have a constant term, it just gains an x. So minus 5 becomes minus 5x. Why? Because if you differentiate minus 5x, you get minus 5. The opposites. And you must always, always remember always always remember 
that there is going to be a constant of integration that you must write down, especially in this type of question here, you must write it down, okay, because when you differentiate something, any constant becomes zero. So there could have been a constant here that was there before in this original function that you have to write it down as plus c, all right? Now this is, well, let's simplify this first. 5 over 2 cancels with 5 over 2, because 5 over 2 times 2 over 5, which is basically 1. So you're left with x to the power of 5 over 2. And when you divide something by a, a fraction, it's like you, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So 2 divided by half is like 2 times 2, which is 4. So you have 4x to the power of a half. You've got minus 5x and plus c. Now, this is called the general solution to this no, we've, we found the general solution. We can find the actual function because it gave us some more information that will help us find the value of c. Now, if they, gave a, if they give you something like this, they give you a point that lies on the curve, then you must find what c is. You can't leave your answer like this. If the question was just integrate that and it didn't mention anything else, all right, if it just said find the integral of this, for example, if the question was like this, for example, find the integral of this, then you would stop here because you can't do any more. But because they gave us a point on the curve, we can use that point to find what C is. Because this is the X value of a point on the curve. This is the Y value on the point of the curve. And this point satisfies this equation. So remember, F of X is like Y. This is like saying Y equals X to the power of 5 plus 4X to the power of a half minus 5X and plus C. So all I need to do is I know when I put X equals 4 into this equation, what should come up is 14. So the y must be 14 if x is 4. So this is 4 to the power of 5 over 2. And this is 4 times 4 to the power of a half minus 5 times 4 plus c. Now remember, this means the square root of 4 to the power of 5. That's what that means. The denominator is the root. The numerator is the power. You have a to the power of m over n. This is the same as the nth root of a to the power of m. The numerator is the power, the denominator is the root. So it's the square root of 4 to the power of 5. You just don't write a 2 here in a square root. And this is 4 times the square root of 4 minus 20 plus c. Okay, so let's just work this out. Now when you're finding, I could do 4 to the power of 5, then find the square root of that, but it's easier if I find the square root of 4 first, which is 2, and then raise that to the power of 5, that gives me 32, plus 4 times 2, which is 8, because the square root of 4 is 2, minus 20 plus c. So 14 is equal to, that's 40 minus 20, which is 20 plus c. So therefore, we can say c is equal to 14 minus 20. So c is equal to negative 6. Therefore, we can say the original function f of x is going to be x to the power of 5 over 2 plus 4x to the power of a half minus 5x and minus 6. And there's the answer to this question, part A. All right. Now, we can, if we want to, we can write it as the square root of x to the power of 5 plus 4 times root x minus 5x minus 6, if we want to. That's fine as well. Okay, but both of those are fine. So that's the answer to question number 11, part A, all about integration and finding a particular solution to this, where we have been given a point on the curve so we can find the value of c. You must find the value of c. It's very, very important. A lot of students would stop here. Because they gave us another value, they gave us a point on the curve, you have to find what c is. It's very, very, very important. And now for question 11, part b. It says, find the equation of the tangent to c at the point p, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants. So we know this is a gradient function. We know this is the point P. We know this is the original function. Now, we want to find the equation of the tangent to C to the curve at the point P. So let's just say we have a curve. I don't know what this looks like, but I'm just going to just draw any, any kind of curve. Just say that's part of a curve. And supposing this is, just, just imagine this would be the point P over here. Okay, this is of course not an accurate drawing. Imagine, imagine that's the point P. Now the tangent to this curve would be a straight line which brushes the curve at that point without cutting through it. Okay, that would be the tangent to the curve at the point P. Has it, so basically the tangent to a curve has exactly the same gradient as 
the curve at the point where it touches it. Okay, so the gradient of this line is the same as the gradient of the curve at the point P. So we want to find the gradient, the equation of this straight line. So to find the equation of the straight line, we need two things. We need a point on the line, and we need um, the gradient of the line. If we have those two things, we can find the equation of any straight line. So the point in the line is the point P, which is given to us as 4, 14. That's given to us in the question. So we already have that. We have the coordinates of this point. So that's a point on this tangent. So that's one thing. And the gradient of the tangent, okay, the gradient of the tangent is going to be equal to the gradient of the curve at the point P. And this, remember, this f dash of x is called the gradient function. Why is it called the gradient function? Because it tells us what the gradient of the curve is for any value x. And we know at point P, x is 4. So the gradient of the tangent will be the same as substituting 4 into the gradient function. That will give us a gradient of the tangent at the point P. Okay, so that's what we've got to do. We've got to find what f dash of 4 is. We've got to replace the x with 4, so we have 5 times 4 squared plus 4 over 2 times the square root of 4 minus 5, which gives you 5 times 16, which is 80 plus 4. So it's 84 divided by 2 times the square root of two, 4, which is 2. That's 4 minus 5. That goes in 21 times. That's 21 minus 5, so that's 16. So that is the gradient function. So that's the gradient at the point t, at the point p, that's the gradient of the function, 16, and the point p itself has coordinates 4, 14. Now we can find the equation of the line. As I mentioned, there's a couple of different formats you can use. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or if you if you want, you can just use y equals mx plus c, which most students at your stage prefer, but I, I personally prefer this, especially for later work and when the gradient is a bit more complicated. But anyway, I'm going to show you both ways. So in this way, the x1 and the y1 are the coordinates of these two points. So I'm going to put y minus 14 equals the gradient, which is 16, times, now I'll write here, x minus, then I put the x value of the point, which is 4. And when I simplify this, I should get the answer. So y minus 16 is equal to 16x minus 64. I have to add 14 to both sides. So I have 16x minus 64 plus 14. Minus 64 plus 14 is basically minus 50. So you have y equals 16x minus 50. That's the equation of the line, and there's the answer. If you wanted to use this method, perfectly fine. Instead of y, you write 14. Instead of m, you write 16. Instead of x, you write 4. And you've got 14 equals 64 plus c. Take away 64 from both sides. So you have 14 minus 64 equals C. So that gives you negative 50. So therefore, if C is negative 50, we've got Y equals M. X plus C, M is 16. So it's 16X plus C. So it's plus minus 50, which is minus 50. So there's the answer um, for this question. Two different ways of finding the final answer is fine. Um, now, that's fine. Supposing the question didn't say find the equation of the tangent. It's very common for it to say find the equation of the, the normal. Now the normal is basically um, a line, a straight line again, which is perpendicular to the tangent. So the, the normal at P would be a line which is like this, which goes through P, so it has the same point. So we can use this point for our, um, you know, in our equation to find the equation of the straight line. But the gradient won't be the same. The gradient for this the gradient of the tangent here is 16. The gradient of the normal would be minus 1 over 16, the negative reciprocal. When, when two lines are perpendicular, then the gradient of those two lines are the negative reciprocals of each other. Okay, you, you change the sign, turn it upside down. So this is 16 over 1, this is minus 1 over 16. Now, the question doesn't ask us to find that, so that's fine. But if it did, that's what we would use instead of the gradient. So I would put here, what minus 1 over 16, here I'd put minus 1 over 16 and proceed to find what um, the equation of the straight line is then. But in this case, they asked for the tangent, so there's no need for us to do that. But just in case they asked for the normal, that's what you have to do. Use a negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. That's the gradient of the normal. It still passes through the same point, 
So you use that same point. Okay, so this question that concludes this um, question from June 2018. Part A was kind of integration. Part B is more like differentiation, but I'll put them together into one um, one video. So if you would like to watch other questions from this particular paper, you can pl click on the playlist that will appear here at the end of the video. If you would like to watch other questions to do with integration from P1, you can click on this playlist. For, uh, if you want to watch something to do with, um, I guess, differentiation from P1, you can click on this, because this, this finding the equation of normal tangents is really mentioned in differentiation chapter there. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, click on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.